Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Deandra. If you're new here, then welcome. <laughs> Make sure you hit that button down below and subscribe so that you can join the family. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. And give me a thumbs up. Alright y'all, so I know it's been a couple of months since I did my last video, but I've been in a bit of a transition mode, moved out of my apartment, lots of different changes that I'll talk to y'all about later, but this video is going to be about being an influencer. I actually consider myself a inspo, but influencer inspo, same thing. And I'm also going to talk about brand deals, how I get brand deals, what I charge for brand deals, and so forth and so on. So if you want to hear more about that, then just keep on watching. Okay, so to start off this video, I'm going to answer a simple question. What is an influencer? Alright, so if you've scrolled through Instagram and you've seen hashtag ad, or if you've seen use my code for money off, those are influencers, ambassadors, affiliates, inspos, whatever word you want to use, that is what they're doing. The brands reach out to the influencers and the influencers post about the brands in hopes of getting more customers for the brands. All right, so what is a brand deal? So there's actually three types of brand deals that I'm going to talk about. These are the major three that you will encounter. So the first type of brand deal, I'm going to just call free deals. So with these deals, the brand reaches out to you and they say, hey, we wanna send you these products and we want you to post content about the products. There's no actual compensation included in these type of deals. Therefore, they're not the ideal ones to take. However, in the beginning, you're probably going to have to do some free deals just because you're just getting your feet wet. Nobody really knows you yet. And it kind of gives you an opportunity to learn the ropes. After you've been doing some free deals and you've kind of gotten your name out there, you'll probably start to get the second type of brand deal, which I call ambassador or affiliate deals. So with these deals, the brand reaches out to you and they say, hey, we really wanna send you some products and we would love to give you a discount code for your followers so that when they use your code, they get money off and you get a percentage of each sale. So with these, the brand is probably gonna send you a box of products either every month or every two months, just kinda depends on the brand. And they're probably gonna include a little card in the box that lets you know what that month's campaign is about and what they want you to post. The amount of money that you make with these brands kind of varies. Um, sometimes the commission could be 10%, 15%, 25% is completely up to the brand. But I would say that you probably shouldn't take any deals that are less than 10%. Because if it's less than 10%, it's probably not really worth your time. But again, that's up to you. These brands are probably going to want you to post at least every month. But if you post every week, for instance, you're likely to make more money because more people are going to see your code, use your code, which makes you more money. The last type of brand deal that I'm gonna talk about are what I'm gonna call paid deals. These are probably the most straightforward deals. So with these, the brand reaches out to you. They say, hey, I wanna see these products. And if you post the content, I will give you X amount of dollars for your content. So this can be actual cash that they send to you through PayPal or something, or it might be a gift card. I've done some deals recently that use an Amazon gift card. It really just depends on what the brand chooses to use. But either way, these are pretty straightforward. You post, they pay you. Very, very simple. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the questions that you all asked me on Instagram. And the first question I'm gonna answer is which deals do I take? All right, so you might be sitting there thinking, okay, I understand the three types of deals, but how do I know if the deals are legit? How do I know which ones I'm supposed to actually take? 
So like I said before, in the beginning, you're probably going to have to do some free deals or deals that's just product in exchange for content. These don't make you any money, but they do give you experience and they help you to get your name out there so that other brands can see you and say, hey, she's really good at this. Let me send her some of my products. But when you're considering free deals, make sure that you're trying to choose brands that align with whatever your brand is or your niche is. For me, I'm natural hair all the way. So basically I only do deals that are about natural hair. Even in the beginning when I was doing free deals, I still only accepted basically hair products or hair tools since that's what my page is about. But if your brand is not super niche, let's say you are a lifestyle poster, then you don't have to choose very, very specific brands because your page kind of includes everything. As you gain more followers, more exposure, more brands will start reaching out to you that are actually trying to compensate you. This can be either the ambassador deals where you use a discount code, or it can be actual just product in exchange for money deals. I would say that once you get to that point to just stop accepting free deals, because now that your name is out there, the brands can see that you have value and they should be paying you for that value. So some tips on how to know if a brand is legit or if it's a brand that you really wanna work with. Again, make sure it's niche, make sure it's in the realm of what you wanna do. Make sure it's something that you believe in. Don't just take any deal because your page will look very not cohesive and it'll look like you're just all over the place. Also, another tip, real brands that are serious about what they're doing are not gonna send you a DM on Instagram or Twitter or any other social media. They're gonna email you. So, for the most part, all of my serious brand deals have come through email. Not to say that I don't sometimes communicate with these brands in my Instagram DMs, but the initial contact was an email. Look for any grammatical errors or just horrible typos, weird spellings, weird grammar, because sometimes these deals are sketchy and they're not legit. When the brand reaches out to you, they're gonna give you the name of their brand and probably gonna give you their Instagram or their Facebook or something, some type of social media for you to go and reference. Make sure that you do that, okay? Make sure you go and look up their Instagram page Look at what kind of posts they do. Look at what their target audience is to make sure that that audience is similar enough to the audience that you have built on your own platforms. It doesn't really make sense to take a deal where they're trying to sell to your audience and your audience doesn't even want what they're selling. That's a waste of time. It's not gonna make them any money, which is not gonna make you any money. So an example for me is that I get a lot of like fitness brands that reach out to me and although I'm in shape I don't actually post fitness content on my Instagram page now if I were to start posting about my workout regimen then it would make sense for me to start posting workout leggings or workout supplements or something like that but because I'm not currently doing that on my Instagram I choose to just not accept those deals Again, that's just a personal preference. So do whatever you think is best for you, but these are just my own tips. Okay, so the next question that I'm going to answer is, how many followers do I need to be an influencer? So for the most part, brands aren't really worried about the number of followers that you have. I know that probably sounds crazy, but the brands are focused on engagement, all right? So if you're somebody that only has 2,000 followers, but you get a lot of engagement, you get hundreds of likes and 50 plus comments on every post, the brand is gonna be like, wow, their audience really, really is interested in what they have to say. That's somebody that I want to work with. Versus if you have 20,000 followers and then you post a picture and it's like crickets. Even though you have a lot of followers, their brand is gonna be like, okay, are these even real followers? Like they're not even responding back to you. They're not likely to reach out to you. So again, engagement is key. 
A micro-influencer is an influencer that has between 1,000 and 10,000 followers on Instagram. This is the group that brands love to target. Why? Because these people have a niche community that really listens to what you have to say and they really trust what your expertise is. So the brand sees that, okay, your followers care about what you say. So if you post my product, they're likely to wanna buy it too. And as you do more brand deals, as more brands start posting you on their pages, your followers will naturally grow. So you don't really have to focus on the followers right now. Focus on your engagement, focus on building a really strong community, and the brands will naturally come. All right, so probably one of the most popular questions that I get, how much should I charge? All right, y'all, so this question is actually kind of hard to answer because it depends on so many different factors. Depends on how much engagement you get, how many followers you have, what brand is reaching out to you. It's kind of just very fluid and really just depends. However, there are some apps that you can try that will give you a nice foundation of what you can probably start charging. The one that I used when I first started taking brand deals was Social Blue Book. There is a paid version of this, but I used the free version, which was enough for what I needed it for. So basically on that app, you put in, I think your followers and like how many likes and comments you get on your posts. And it basically calculates what other influencers that have about around the same amount of followers and engagement as you, what they charge, which gives you an idea of what you should be charging. You do not have to stick to this price, but it does give you a nice idea of where you can start. So on there, it'll give you a price for different types of posts, all right? So when the brand reaches out to you, you're not gonna just give them a blanket flat rate. No, absolutely not. They need to pay you for what they're asking you for. For instance, if they're just asking you to post a picture of you holding the product or there's a picture of the products themselves, that doesn't really require a whole lot of work. And so your price for that might be a little bit on the lower side. However, if they say, okay, we want you to post a picture on your feed, we want you to post something on your stories, and we want you to post a Reels. Now that is a little bit more work, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're going to charge for each of those things. It might be X amount of money for the post, X amount of money for the story, X amount of money for the reels. Because technically those are three different jobs. Now, if they're asking you for something more elaborate, like a YouTube review or a YouTube unboxing video, that's the jackpot, all right? You should definitely probably double whatever they were asking for just an Instagram post if they want a YouTube video. Why? Because YouTube videos are so much more work than just an Instagram post. You have to sit down, you have to record, you have to edit. It's a lot more work. Not to mention on YouTube, because it's owned by Google, if somebody Googles this person's products, your video might show up on the front page, all right? So that means that tons of traffic might go to your video and watch it to get ideas about whether or not they should buy the products. Don't you think you should be getting compensated pretty well for that? Yeah. <laughs> One thing you can do if you don't wanna have to adjust your rates for every single brand, you can make what's called a rate sheet where you literally list on there what you charge for each type of service. So you can have Instagram posts this much, Instagram story this much, YouTube video this much, and then you can just send that picture to every brand that reaches out to you. And that way you won't have to keep typing it out over and over again. However, if you want to adjust your rates based on which brand is reaching out, then you can just respond to their email with whatever your prices are. Don't be afraid to charge what you feel like you are worth. All right, guys? The worst that a brand can say is no. Do not lowball yourself, all right? If you feel like your post is worth this much, 
Don't lower what you think that your post is worth just because you are afraid the brand is gonna say no. Absolutely not. Somebody will pay you what you want. So just don't sell yourself short. So the last thing that I'm gonna emphasize is your email address. All right, y'all. So remember, just like I was saying, serious brands are going to email you. That means that if you are gonna be a serious influencer, you need to have a business email. All right, so do not just use your regular email that all your junk goes to, no. You need a business email that ideally aligns with whatever your brand name is or your social media username is. So for me, my username on everything is Deandra Levon. So my business email is DeandraLavon at gmail.com. So when I see an email that's in that particular inbox, I know, okay, this is an actual brand because pretty much only brands use that email. If your email is something like sexymama242, the brand might be like, hmm, I don't think I can take her that seriously. And they might change their mind about working with you. So please get a serious business email. I promise you it's completely worth it. Other tips about emails, make sure that you are keeping up with your emails. I would say, Try to respond to your business emails within 24 to 48 hours. This just looks way more professional and you don't want the brand to give the opportunity to somebody else just because you didn't respond. When the brand sends you an email, they're probably gonna let you know that they wanna work with you. They might say, we wanna send you some products, are you interested? At this point, you can respond and say, hey, thank you so much for reaching out. Is this a paid deal? All right. At that point, they're going to either say yes, it's a paid deal or no, it's not a paid deal. If you're at the point where you are no longer taking unpaid deals, yes, you should still reply to this email. But what you should say is, thank you so much for considering me. Thank you so much for reaching out, something like that. But Unfortunately, at this time, I am not doing any unpaid deals, but please let me know if you want to work in the future. I would love to work with you. Something like that sounds a lot more polite. It sounds like you're still open to working with them and it doesn't just turn the brand off. The reason you don't wanna turn them off is that maybe right now they don't have the budget to pay you. Or maybe right now they're not trying to work with anybody that requires pay. But in the future, they may decide that they do wanna have an ambassador or they do wanna start compensating you. And they'll think about you versus if you send them a rude email, they're probably just gonna scratch you off the list altogether. And even if the brand says upfront that it's not a paid deal, if it's a brand that you want to work with, you can decide to take this unpaid deal. Overall, just respond to all of your emails. Unless it's a brand that you just completely don't wanna work with ever in life, respond to their email and be polite, be professional because you never know what could happen in the future. All right, so these are just some final influencer tips. Number one, keep up with your dates. Keep up when content is due. Keep up with what the brand is asking you because if you turn in too many of your deals late, that brand might not wanna work with you anymore. You might get a reputation for somebody that's not reliable, and that's just not something that you want to do. So what I like to do, every time I get a brand deal, I like to write them down or put them in my notes app on my phone so that I can keep up with when everything is due. That's incredibly important. Another tip, don't promote a product that you don't believe in. All right, y'all, this is so, so, so important. There are times when a brand will reach out to me and send me some hair products that I just don't really like. <laughs> like, they just did not work for my hair at all. If this happens to you, there's two ways you can handle this, all right? You can either post about the product, be honest, but let your followers know, like, you know, this product didn't really work for my hair. However, I think that it would work great for this, this, or this. You know what I mean? That way you're not completely just bashing the product, but you're being honest about how it works for your hair. Another option is to just reach out to the brand, email them, let them know, hey, thank you so much for this opportunity. 
but unfortunately this product did not work for me and i really don't want to post a bad review that can be even more detrimental to the brand than if you just don't post anything at all it's just better to just not lie all right your followers trust you your audience trusts you don't lie to them this tip kind of goes along with the how much should i charge i know there are times where you're gonna feel like all right i have this price and these brands keep telling me no that might be a time where you want to reevaluate what you're asking for but it might not be you know like if you feel like this is what i'm worth this is what my time is worth and you can afford to not accept these brands then stick to your guns stick to whatever price you've set and don't worry about it like i said the worst the brand can say is no but if you feel like you do want to get some more brands maybe lower it a little bit just to see if you'll get better results and last but not least, remember that this is a learning process. I did not know all of this or any of this actually when I first started doing my brand deals. You kind of just learn as you go along. And just like with anything else, you get better with time and you become more confident with time. One of the questions I got on Instagram was actually, how did I get so confident? And y'all, there are a lot of times when I'm not confident, all right? It took time, it took, a lot of me doing different brand deals and different opportunities for me to become even comfortable enough to talk to y'all on camera about this topic. But I just really wanted to help some of y'all. I know when I first started doing this, I didn't have a lot of videos that I could go and look at, especially about natural hair influencers or anything like that. And so I really just wanted to be somebody that y'all could watch and get some tips from me. And if there's any questions that I did not answer, please feel free to comment down below or message me on Instagram or email me, whatever you need to do. I really wanna make sure that I'm answering all of y'all's questions. I can make a part two of this video if need be. I just really want all of us to make some great passive, <laughs> easy income because y'all, there's literally nothing better than getting paid just to do my hair and talk about my hair because I was gonna do that anyway. So why not get paid for it? You know what I mean? Yeah. So thank y'all so much for watching. Again, subscribe down below if you haven't subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see y'all in my next video. Thank you.